Hi everyone, it's a great pleasure to have you here with us. We are at the ninth edition of Curta Brasilia International Short Film Festival in our sixth year uh, with VR program and international content especially. And it will be the first official year with the partnership between the Dansk Cultural Institute and our festival. Actually, we are building this whole partnership and intercultural dialogue for more than three years, especially with the project Politics of Nature. But uh, especially in 2020, we are going to present you two special 360 content. Um, one of them is um, with Uri Krano. It's the songboard directed by Lucy Granwell and animation direction by Michelle and Uri Krano. You will have now this dialogue with him and Frederick Lassen from Politics of Nature, Pong. And we are really, really glad to present you here in this opportunity to know more uh, about engagement for climate change and this relation between in empathy and new technologies. So enjoy the festival and we also will have Space Safari directed by Niles Har and Peter Schiffer and you can create your own avatar and we can find us together in this CVR platform. So enjoy it! Hi. My name is Anders Hinze. I'm the director of the Danish Cultural Institute in Brazil. And um, also called Instituto Cultural da Dinamarca. We are based in uh, Rio for 11 years. And um, as soon as the pandemic allows it, we'll move to Sao Paulo, open our new office. Uh, we work with the cultural dimension um, in the transformation of the world towards a sustainable future. Uh, we promote intercultural dialogue, understanding and inspiration between Denmark and Brazil, as well as between Brazil and the Nordic region as a whole. Uh, we focus on uh, co-creating new possibilities within uh, urban design, food culture and uh, audiovisual, with uh, sustainability and diversity as uh, cross-cutting uh, values. Now, we are really thrilled uh, to launch this uh, collaboration with uh, Festival Curta Brasilia uh, that connects film and VR screenings in an innovative format uh, with artistic exchange and development labs. All linked to uh, the board game, uh, or should I say the universe, uh, called Politics of Nature that is created by Fred Lassen and Jacob Raffin. So it's an enormous pleasure to uh, present this conversation between uh, Pawn co-creator Fred and one of the leading artists of uh, European virtual reality today, Yuri Crano, uh, about his uh, award-winning work Songbird uh, and how VR can inspire different perceptions of nature and us uh, humans in it. Hello, everyone and welcome to Kuta Brasilia uh, Virtual Reality Talk, CVR. My name is Frederick Lassen and today I am blessed to have Yuri Karnot with me, the co-creator the co of Songbird, which is exhibited here in the online version of Kuta Brasilia. I've been asked to quickly, quickly introduce myself. Um, um, I am the co-initiator of Politics of Nature, which is also known as PON, which is a translation of Bruno Latour's um, philosophy, mainly expressed in the book called Politics of Nature, and which is this year's theme of Cota Basilium. And that is also one of the reasons why during this curation and selection that we have been lucky to get Songbird as one of the movies that we are going to see, experience, and exhibit. And just a quick, uh, a quick note in terms of uh, <laughs> who is sitting here and present today. I, both me and Yui, is um, is missing our like fundamental partners in the work that we do. Um, I need to make, make a big shout out to Jacob Raffin, 
which I'm doing politics of nature with. And Yuri is working together with his partner and wife, Michelle. So, but they're with us in spirit, but today is just going to be you and I, Yuri. So first of all, thank you for being here with us today. Yes, thank you for inviting. So basically this year is a little bit different. Everybody knows that the, the Songbird cannot be experienced as a full installation. Um, so it's going to be 2D for the majority of the spectators. So can you start by telling a little bit about both the creative considerations that was made before creating mm -hmm. Songbird, but also about what was it actually intended to be and to feel for, yeah, when it, when it, when it used to be shown at festivals? Uh, okay, oof, that's a big question. So, um, uh, we, you know, we, me and my wife, Michelle, we are um, animation filmmakers. This is uh, our trade. We come from classic animation, from painting. And in the last couple of years, uh, I think like five years ago, we started uh, um, working on, on different platforms that are then film. Uh, we were flirting with uh, VR. And the more we got into it, we were interested in, you know, in the new possibilities of, of storytelling within these platforms. Um, and after we've made uh, our first VR experience uh, that was called Nothing Happens, uh, we were approached by the, uh, the Guardian, the newspaper, um, as part of the series of, of uh, experiences that they were, they were working on. And we were asked if we would be interested to, uh, to make a songbird. Um, and the approach was, uh, you know, uh, those of you who will try the experience will see that it's a very, it's a documentary piece um, about, um, uh, how, about nature and about uh, extinction. And uh, it's kind of a bittersweet story about a bird that doesn't exist anymore. And you are the last person who goes out there to try and document, uh, see the bird, and maybe say farewell to an extinct uh, life. Um, so that's kind of an introduction to, to, to the piece. It's a very touching story. Yeah. Yeah. It is. And I think that's what, uh, I mean, we, we're lucky to be in a position that we could be very selective with with the, the, you know, the work we, we choose to do. Um, so, uh, but that was kind of, uh, it was a no brain. It felt like a, a good thing to do also. So um, the, you know, when we, when we work on our, on our own pieces, we usually, you know, it has a little bit more of a abstraction to it. And uh, I guess the artistic uh, approach is more, you know, the, it's not always linear narratives, but in this one, it was clear that it, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's for the broad audience from broad uh, ages as well, uh, slash uh, it could be an educational piece. And it, it did prove to be something that can go into libraries and schools. And we're very happy that it does that. It's actually really expanding uh, our target audience. Um, Yes. Uh, what was the second part of your? Uh, no, the, sec the, the second part was um, was um, because this is going to be like supporting material, like to yeah. the actual experience. So, yes. in order for actually try to help the viewers imagine what your yeah. actual artistic ideas were in terms yeah. of onboarding and yes. offboarding. Yeah. So so. Um, uh, again, with our experience in uh, in virtual reality, uh, we are also we've also uh, had been expanding expanding in the um, uh, how would I say the the real space around around the experience and how uh, you get a full sensorial experience that it's not just concentrated on what you see in what you see in the virtual space. And this is uh, we've done installation before, and in this one. We've decided to, um, before you even start the virtual piece, um, you are being tuned into this expedition mode. Uh, so what we've done is we've built this uh, custom-made tent um, that, uh, and we've put inside, we've put all kinds of sleeping bags and, uh, and blankets that uh, you are asked to take off your shoes and you sit at the entrance of the tent and uh, just before putting the goggles, you, you get a small explanation of where you are. And then you put the goggles and you start crawling around. The experience is actually being uh, 
ideally is being taken from uh, you know the floor point of view. You do it on your knees and, on, and with your hands, and and the tent is big enough for you to to crawl around, um, but it has this scent of uh, old mattresses and and dump. And there's also a, the the tent is made from a special fabric, so from the outside we have a back projection of you know, the scenery. It's not the experience, it's not what you see, but people from the outside can see you um, when you crawl around, they see your silhouette within this kind of uh, magical forest, uh, which is very intriguing and makes you, from the outside, makes you want to go in as well. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it's, it's quite theatrical, I would say. Um, but unfortunately, we can't present it like this. No, no. Brazil. Yuri, I know that you have some slides, and while you're yeah. getting, getting, getting dope, getting them prepared then i just want to make like another little announcement like this whole theme about politics of nature is also an ongoing project of turning this philosophy into virtual reality experiences Mm -hmm. which is a collaboration between many partners both in france brazil denmark and so forth which basically also means that the Danish Cultural Institute and Cote Brasilia has been facilitating some VR ateliers where like we are trying actually to to make a game, making something that is the approach to all these like extensions controversies that we are facing uh, right um, right now, which is important also to, yeah. to mention. Yeah, you? Should I share my screen? Please do. Yes. So, um, I think it would be nice to just go very quickly through a couple of stages uh, in the process of, of uh, you know, kind of the behind the scenes of, of how we made this. Um, so, um, as you probably, if you've read the, you know, the, the premise, uh, this is the oh, this is the the bird that doesn't exist anymore. It's a drawing of the bird. There's very few uh, live photography of of, uh, of the species because it was. You know, it was hunted and it was uh, put in museums, but as a living piece, video almost doesn't exist. But it's a very special bird. It has a very unique singing, and it's all about that. Um, and the story, the, the, the real story, which is very close to what you do in the VR experience, is about this guy, Dr. James, uh, James Jacobi, who's an, a researcher who is the last person who went to see the bird. And the, you know, part of the research, we got this footage, which was uh, just a 60 millimeter film uh, that he shot when he went on the expedition where with his last encounter with the bird. You can hardly see it. It's very, very bad quality. But at some point, if you look very closely, there is a bird there. Um, I'll just try to find it. But it's really, really hard. But that's kind of the footage that we had. Um, which is not just flu. It's not a lot to work with. So we have to be here. It is. It's, it's um, you know, yeah. There it is. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so we had to, uh, and I think this is where the magic of animation comes in when we had the freedom to kind of imagine a little bit, but, you know, stay close to uh, reality. This is Kauai. This is where it takes place, uh, some, somewhere in the Pacific Ocean. There was no budget to send us there and do the research, unfortunately. But... Um, we still had a, a very thorough research that had to be done from, you know, this is kind of a script from, you know, the um, transcripting the, the interview with, with, with Jim and creating something that's a little bit more dramatic and how you, you know, just cinematically how you uh, break it down to something that, is, uh, that feels like an experience. And this is where the thought of, uh, you know, three structure, classical three structure that is easy to follow came in hand because um, this is something we're very used to do, you know, the three chapter uh, story. So we've decided to take you through the island. First, you know, just uh, uh, very gently land you uh, in the, you know, on on the shore line and then go slowly go deeper and deeper into the, the, the highlands and then into the jungle. And working with the Guardian was kind of a back and forth push uh, where we asked them, so how do you see it? And they, you know, they send us this drawing, which is, you know, they don't know how to draw, but at least they try to give us some kind of a representation of where you are. You see a little bit of waterfalls here, I think. Um, and then we asked, so how do you see the encounter with the bird? And they send us this. This is a bird. This is a tree trunk, and you're somewhere here. So I think visually it was hard for them to 
to conceptualize it, and it wasn't their job. They're, they're journalists, and that was our job. But uh, we started boarding it, and I think this is one of the first drawings I've done, which you can see, you know, it's still a flat image, but there's already thinking of the 360 dimensions where, you know, you get closer to the island, this is the island, and you think, what is the main focus? I mean, you as the user, you can look around, of course, but it's important that if you look back, there's nothing there, so you know that you're actually heading here. Uh, just keeping the attention of the viewers and such. I'll just go a little bit forward. This is also funny because uh, we ask them to give us a little bit of like trying to map out the journey as they see it. And then they took crayons and, you know, it was back to kindergarten, which was nice. Um, and, and, you know, they used colors. Uh, but this was really helpful. I think mapping and planning is something that is very crucial in, um, when you work within XR platforms. So after we had that, we went into our whiteboard and tried to figure it out, you know, the whole movement. It's almost like choreography of where you are uh, according to what happens around you and how do we shift your, you know, we make sure that you, you have enough freedom to do whatever you like, but then that you're not missing uh, crucial story points. Yuri, is, this also, is, is there also like emotional triggers like embedded in this graph? Um, not in the graph, but I think we, we, uh, we, we took in consideration all kinds of behaviors. You know, when you think of, of users, we call them, uh, they're very different. So some people will just stick to their place and won't move much and just, you know, very rigidly look around. And some will just try to break everything. And when you make an experience, you, you need to make sure that it can accommodate these really different types. And I think this is where we, uh, we made sure that if someone is very active, we will make sure that the whole system that we build around it, if, if, if the computer sees that there's lots of movement, then uh, things are happening faster, for example, uh, for, for this person not to get bored. And if it's the other way around, it takes more time and it's more gentle. So these kind of things. Um, maybe another thing which was important for, you know, as a commissioned work, uh, the whole documentary aspect, which means that we went through a very thorough research of how it looks like in real. So we've collected all these images uh, of all the vegetations with a specific, you know, where, where they are in the island, on the lowlands or highlands, and we really knew all these plants. And then uh, the reason why they approached us was that they wanted to, to have the look that we, we make, the painterly look. And the next stage after this learning about this vegetation was to uh, create the drawings, which is, you know, we looked at the plants and then we started drawing them. Oh, thank you. Almost like uh, in this kind of, uh, you know, John encyclopedia, you know, all these. Uh, and uh, the system that we've decided on was to create assets. So even if it was just one specific bush, we would paint it in pieces because uh, the painting is flat. Everything is flat. And you need to find a way to nicely put it in a 3D space that it doesn't feel completely, I don't know, cardboardy. And, and, and I think the magic is just to do it in pieces and then comes a stage where you, uh, we call it gardening. You just take all the, the bank of, of paintings that you have and inside VR we've made this kind of system that you know, I can, you know, I have all the plants and I start planting them around me in a nice uh, compelling way. And that's how we did it. It took some time, but uh, it was the, it was a very, um, uh, how would I say, um, empowering work. You feel a little bit like God creating your little heaven. It was really nice. Can you tell us a little bit about, sorry, sorry to interrupt, um, um, can you tell a little bit about as well about the interactive elements there, like were, that use, they usually would be part of like the experience with... Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, so um, I think I can jump a little bit, maybe there's, uh, sorry. So, yeah, so here, for example, you see we have, we've made this system um, that is kind of an AI system where uh, you have lots of birds around you. Before you reach the, the final act of meeting the OO, the bird, there's also some kind of introduction to the whole, uh, you know, bird, uh, the birds that, that live on the island. And what we've done is that uh, there are some kind of hotspots on, on those trees that are, these are spots for the birds to land. But beside that, 
they fly around you. And it depends where you look. Uh, it kind of makes sure that uh, you want me a nice, because the, the animation is, is done almost like in a game where you create this, you know, you have a bird flying and you have a bird landing and you have a bird uh, departuring and there's a bird who's, you know, eating something on, on the branch. And all these are kind of randomly connected according to, you know, whatever the, the computer wants. But we don't want you to miss those moments. So wherever you look, we make sure that once you, you, you stop moving um, and you're looking somewhere, there's probably a hotspot there on the tree and a, a bird will land there and do a small act for you without you noticing that it's doing it for you. It, 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 the whole idea is that it feels natural. Uh, so this is part of the interaction. And also uh, a main piece of the interaction, which is, oh, sorry, what was it, the tape, yeah. Um, we, uh, being, a, I mean, it's a very, it's not like a big interactive piece, but there is a moment where you are uh, asked to, uh, to record the bird, the singing. And you get this kind of, uh, uh, you know, it's, it, it, it all happened in the 80s. So you get this uh, tape recorder and you are asked to uh, approach the bird and try to capture the sound. And um, you have this, uh, this machine and you, you do it. And then once you've recorded it uh, and the bird flies away, you can play the machine that, uh, and then it plays the singing. And then hopefully the bird will hear it and come again. This is part of the, the story that really happened. And it's interesting, and you told me that um, there were actually some of the users that, uh, even though they were kindly asked to record, they, yeah, no. Nah, I mean, and, and then again, you need to accommodate different users. So uh, I think in, in, I don't know, 85%, which is quite high, people will just cooperate and, and do what they're asked to do. Some people won't. So the 15%, we don't, you don't want them to get stuck in some kind of a limbo that nothing happens. So, so I think you give them a chance, then the narrator asks you again, please you know, press, record, or play. And if they don't, then you know, uh, it, it will just do it by itself. Um, so you're not being punished, but you're also not being, uh, you know, no, it's not waiting for you uh, forever. Are you, are you aware of, of the Twin Peaks reference in terms of <laughs> Dr. Jacoby and like the tape recorder? No, it's a, it's a it's a crazy co co coincidence. It's just uh, it's the old not, Twin Peaks or the new Twin Peaks. No, but like the, the, the whole like the whole fact of Dr. Jacoby, that is uh, the therapist, that is uh, ah like that talks with Margot Palmer, <laughs> and uh, yeah, yeah, it's just like, yeah. <laughs> no, no. that she's going. Uh, yeah, yeah. So um, yeah, I mean. Um, in the, in the piece, there's uh, both 2D animation and 3D animation. Because we come from paintings, um, most of the birds are, are this kind. These are real, you know, based on real birds that uh, still exist in the island. Um, but the bird um, that you meet is, uh, is a little bit of a low resolution of it, but um, it's a 3D bird. And the reason for it is that you can really go close to it and it needs to have uh, those three dimensions so you can kind of interact with it. And it triggers it when you look at it. I mean, it kind of looks where, where you look and it, at some point it can look you in the eye. Um, so that's what we try to do. Uh, and this is just to show how we made this kind of a system that although these are flat paintings, we've made them wrap around you so they're not completely flat. Um, and I think this is uh, a screen capture from, from inside the, the game engine. And this is how it looks. So these are all in pieces and they're just planted around you. Um, yeah, that was a really, really quick presentation. And this is just a little bit more uh, screenshots. No, it was yeah. super informative. Thank you so much. Yeah. yeah. And this is how it looks at the end. The OO bird. Yeah. The extinct OO bird. Which is also interesting because, you know, as we talked before, um, it was very important for, for the, you know, for, for the people from The Guardian that it's, it's quite exact and it's documented, it's a documentary. But the truth is that the O is a very, very small bird. And if uh, you want to, to get some kind of uh, identify with this bird, if it was really like in, in real life, it would be too small to even see its eyes and it would, you know, birds, they don't make eye connection and uh, such. So we had to, to put a little bit of, you know, what animation can do. And I would call it Disneyfy a little bit um the behavior of the bird yeah but not too much hey what is not too much not too much yes <laughs> what is the take home what, what what is the take home 
message like from the piece like i know that the guardian like uh, approached you like what is uh, like in your point of view what 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 is the take home message take home message i think um i can uh, i can stop the share now um oh. yeah you're back so um i think um what happens in VR is that you, it's, it's probably the only med medium that can create this kind of uh, personification of, of, of a situation. So uh, instead of being a story that someone tells you, it becomes a story that you, you feel on your own flesh. And I think um, also by talking to people who tried it, um, some people cried doing it, and I, and I think of realization. We hear a lot about, uh, you know, environmental issues and how, um, you know, our planet is really going, uh, is, 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 is dying. Um, so at some point, I think uh, some of us are becoming a little bit blunt to all, all, all these kind of news feed. And suddenly trying it and doing it and feeling it on your own uh, body uh, gives you some kind of a recognition of, of what's going on. I mean, this is just a small story about a bird that doesn't exist anymore, but you know, it's, it's, uh, the big story is, uh, is extinction and what, what we're doing to this world and, and um, where it's going. And I think um, uh, it's another dimension of, of understanding that. I agree. I agree. Yuri, our time is almost running out. So just here, like on the final note, I want you to, want you to get the chance to talk about like your latest project, The Hangman mm -hmm. at Home, which mm -hmm. let's celebrate with everybody that it won the Grand Jury Prize for Best VR Immersive Work at the La Biennale de Venecia, which mm -hmm. is quite impressive, even though that is like these online, online times. But yeah. like, because it might be it might be an, a, an experience that is going to be visiting Cota Brasilia maybe in like in, in the coming years. So what yeah. can people expect in terms of that and also in terms of interactive elements? Because I've been lucky to see it. Mm. And for me, it also holds some resemblance to Arbor is uh, the line with the uh, Hurricato Lacanaro, which is also a friend of the Cota Brasilia festival. Yeah. With the match and everything, like in the whole story building and chapters, can you tell a little bit? Well, I, I, you know, this is, uh, it's funny to talk about an experience that no one had tried. So I, I, I can just say that it's, uh, you know, it's based on a poem and the hangman at home, it's not about hanging people. It's more about the feeling of, you know, uh, it's about a person coming home after a day's work and spending time with his family. That's the poem. The only strange thing is that he has this strange occupation is the hangman you know that's what he does for a living he hangs people so that puts you in this kind of uh strange position where what we try to do is uh, through uh you know a uh, couple of interiors you move in in some kind of uh, rooms and apartments of other people we create some kind of uh, awkward intimacy when you're put in a room that is not yours and you're allowed to see someone else's life in a very you know, specific moment of, of, you know, doing some kind of an intimate moment, being watched by you, um, and uh, going through these rooms and then asking you to, to participate, and, and there's a call for, for action. I think it's a piece about uh, responsibility and responsiveness, and, uh, you know, it raises questions about us as, as, you know, as human beings. I mean, of course, we are not hangmen. We, we, we don't hang people, but we do things, and there is responsibility or to, to what we do, or consequences to the, to what we do. So it's about it, which actually builds a bridge to like the song code and extension. Yeah, yeah, hangman. Yeah, I, I I think so. I mean, there is a thread that goes. Yeah. Yes. We fantastic. Thank you. Thank you so much for um, participating here today and for all of you that is going to Cota Basilia. Um, Enjoy this very, very beautiful and special experience. And Yuri, yeah. good luck and say hi. Thank you for for Thank you for Thank you for Yeah, yeah, I can tell uh, it. <laughs> yeah, and uh, we're happy to uh, to be part of this. So thank you for uh, exhibiting our work. Thank you.